here's what no one's realizing about the Brooklyn Nets. While the mainstream media obsesses over Kyrie only returning for road games and generally focuses on the negatives, the Harden and Durant-led Nets have established an Eastern Conference best 22-9 record, including the best road record in all of basketball. From the up-and-coming five-man Nicholas Claxton potentially pulling off the dunk of the year, to the $12 million man who's proving himself as one of the most undervalued players in Patty Mills, there's more to Brooklyn than there seems to be on the surface. As Mills combined with Harden to drop 68 on the Lakers, the Nets' Christmas Day performance minus Kevin Durant and of course Kyrie displayed a factor for Brooklyn that's rarely discussed, and we're going to talk about it today. Before continuing, only 11.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll give you a follow back. Links in the description for both those platforms. After Kyrie and Harden would both end up sustaining year-ending injuries in the 2021 playoffs, Kevin Durant was left all by his lonesome to carry the brunt of the Nets' scoring load against the Milwaukee Bucks in round two. Kyrie still being out this season due to his vaccination status has left questions among a good percentage of the media and fans centering around whether or not this Nets team will actually make a push towards a championship in 2022, or is this a team that's just all hype and filled with drama? Despite some concerns about the continuity with all three in the lineup, the overwhelming MVP firepower that this team has at full strength or even with just Kevin Durant and James Harden, the Nets are currently the Vegas favorites to take home the Larry O'Brien trophy in the new year. And that's not only due to this team's top-heavy firepower revolving around two all-time great isolation shot creators in the Slim Reaper and the Beard. Sleeping on well-suited role players like a few former All-Stars in the front court in Blake Griffin, Paul Millsap, and LaMarcus Aldridge will allow them to capitalize off open looks. And while those three with Bruce Brown, DeAndre Bembry, and James Johnson can catch and finish whether they're in the paint or beyond the arc at times, there's two role players in particular that stand out to me in terms of how they fill a specific need for Brooklyn. Those two guys are firstly this past summer's biggest free agent pickup in Patty Mills, and secondly, the organization's 31st overall pick from the 2019 draft, an ever-developing, lengthy, and mobile center in Nick Claxton. We'll get to the impact of Claxton, but more notably, we'll go in depth on one of the NBA's most criminally underrated players in the marksman from down under, Patty Ice. But we have to lead off with the beard, James Harden, who just dropped a 36-point triple-double on the Lakers, as well as a bit of a cheap shot to the groin of THT. But other than that low blow- Low blow? Hell no! Hell yes. In the new NBA, with the refs for the most part not calling lean-in fouls, they do call them a lot still, but we have to give some flowers to James Harden for continuing to put up all-star outputs in 21-22 in a very changed league. It was tough for Harden at first, and I even made this video covering the struggles from the former two-time MVP, but as the games wore on, Harden's began finishing through the contact at an exceptionally high clip, and he's using his footwork and pure talent to post my career-esque stat lines one after the other. James has been struggling with his efficiency this month, shooting only 36% from the field and 21.2% from deep, but with how he's been such a perfect facilitating and all-around stellar second option next to a top 15 all-time grade in Kevin Durant, you wouldn't have even realized those below average numbers on paper from Harden. Near triple-double tallies on a nightly basis give the beard a pass for any lack of efficiency. His outing against the purple and gold on Christmas Day was Harden's fifth 30-point triple-double in a Nets uniform, which is a franchise record, and he did it in a team-high 39 minutes of play. It was only the third time an NBA player had a game of 35-plus points, 10-plus rebounds, and 10-plus assists on Christmas Day, as the Beard joined Oscar Robertson, who did it twice in 1961 and 63. The lone member of Brooklyn's Big Three shot 10 of 25 from the field and 3 of 8 from three-point range. It was unclear how Harden was going to look in this Christmas Day matchup because, for one, he hadn't played basketball in two weeks, but secondly, he was sharing the floor with just two-plus shooters, Patty Mills and Langston Galloway, and due to that lack of shooting around him, his driving lanes were somewhat clogged. 
but Harden didn't let that get to him. Man, sometimes basketball is really simple. The Nets are a different team when James Harden is aggressive, refreshed, and looking light on his feet while attacking downhill. At the Crypto, for the first time all year, James looked like his floater was automatic. Harden was shooting just 37% on short mid-range jumpers coming into Saturday's game, but last night looked like last season's beard. You know the guy is really himself when he stops on a dime to tee up a step back three. And it's just scary when you think that soon the Nets are going to get the whole gang back together with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving partially on the road back in the fold. Ideally, James Harden is able to maintain this same level of aggression when the whole crew is intact. James paved the way for the W, but it was actually the former NBA champion Patty Mills who kept the ship afloat late in the game with a series of stone-cold daggers from beyond the arc. The Aussie sniper ended up tying his career high with 34 points on 11 of 17 shooting overall and 8 of 13 from deep to go along with 7 assists, 2 rebounds, and a steal in 36 minutes. One of the best performances of Patty's career came with a prestigious record as well, as one year after Kyrie Irving set the Christmas Day record with seven triples against Boston, Mills broke it with eight three-pointers. On the season overall, Mills may only be down at number 10 among all players in three-point percentage as he's making 44% of his deep-range bombs, but among the leaders, he's taken the most three-point attempts each game by a good amount, as Mills takes seven and a half threes per night. I can't stress enough how much of a problem Mills makes this Nets offense to slow down. Patty's not only effective catching and shooting, but according to NBA.com, Mills attempts around two pull-up three-point attempts per night and makes around 38% of those looks. That stat exemplifies the elite bit of extra shot creation that Mills has scarily brought to the table for a team that was already damn stacked before he arrived. Additionally, Mills can drop dimes with fluidity in the pick and roll, he may only be averaging 2.6 assists per game, but the Aussie makes timely passes which show off his evidently high and extremely underrated playmaking awareness. Nicholas Claxton's another role player for the Nets who ideally fits in next to Brooklyn's top options. He's even developed solid chemistry with Patty in the pick and roll. Nick's still a tad raw in terms of his skill on both ends of the floor, but the instincts, size, and general upside have all been displayed this season. Albeit in just 12 games played due to a right knee injury, Clax is posting a career best 7.3 points per game and also a career best 63% from the field. Nick's also matching career highs in blocks and free throw percentage. The 22 year old has to improve on his defensive mobility to further earn the trust of Steve Nash, as he's only playing 19.7 minutes on average. But given the Nets are going to need him come the playoffs most likely, I think Clack should be getting more like 23 to 25 minutes per night at this point. While per 36 numbers are a bygone stat, based off his playing time, it's suitable in this case to look at Claxton's where his overall line improves to 13 points and 8 rebounds to go along with 2.3 blocks per game. More importantly than his numbers on paper, it's Nick's 7 foot 3 wingspan, 37 inch vertical jump, and excellent hands that make him the perfect big man for the Nets offense. He's very solid at catching passes in traffic, which is a crucial quality for a big man to have. So again, Clax just needs the experience playing as much as possible to improve defensively. And baptizing a shot blocking icon in LeBron James by throwing down the dunk of the year up to this point very much proved those abilities I just broke down. But aside from their big three, what's the most dangerous aspect of the Brooklyn Nets in your opinion? Best answer gets next video shout out. After my winners were announced last video for the holiday giveaway, the speaks board is reset and the top five commenters by March 21st are going to receive an NBA jersey or shoe or piece of ball gear of their choosing. The first speaks winner on the newly reset board is Kent Saludo, who says the Heat's biggest X factor is Hero's emergence and very noticeable improvement this season. His shot creation and shooting is more consistent. He's also an improving playmaker and defender. Thanks for every amazing answer. Hope you all have a great one. DFlow signing off.